In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the sixth chapter of the Epistle to the Ephesians, in the tenth verse, My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. May I first of all say I'm very surprised to see so many in chapel on Monday morning. Far too many today put their religion on like their Sunday coat and take it off after church on Sunday and forget about it for the rest of the week because they want to keep separate education and religion or business and religion or state and religion. In other words, their state of mind as far as religion is concerned is reserved for one hour out of the week on Sunday. Now this may seem a little harsh, but if all of the people who attend church on Sunday were to carry their religion over the week, we have, would have far less in quantity of troubles than we know in our world today, and particularly in the world over which we have, through the power of his might, through the strength of the Lord, over which we have some control. There are many kinds of people in our world today, and I find that I am concerned this morning with three types of people. I run into them every day as students. I run into them every day, believe it or not, as faculty. And the first kind of person who fails to use the power of his might or to be strong on the Lord is the tired. Oh my. I was so tired last night I just couldn't get my theme done for this morning. And I wonder if this is acceptable on Monday morning to the English teacher or professor. It was my guess that it would not be. But after generations of generation and learning in the controlled halls of our educational centers, there are still those that arrive expecting for some reason way off here somewhere that tiredness is sufficient reason for not working. But there are other kind of tired people in our midst which we in our busy life fail to see. And I suppose they're somewhat like old St. John who wrote his Easter memories that are attached on to the gospel according to St. John. You know, that last part of the gospel was not originally there as far as we know. It was tacked on by some scriptwriter in later ages. Yet, perhaps the most beautiful part of St. John is this old, tired man's Easter memories. As he remembered in his old age, more clearly than he could have in his youth, the facts surrounding the resurrection and the life of our Lord before he ascended. Here was an old man, and only an old man, who could give this type of message. You as young people 
need now and again, it seems to me, as an old people, to be reminded that there is some wisdom in age. There is experience in age. And although they may seem old and tired to you, they have a lot to offer you. Breck School is a tiny school on the West River Road, as some of you may know. In our midst, we have several of these kind of people. They are old, they are tired, but if you were to spend a few moments with them once a week, you would gain more than all the seminars that you will spend in the next coming week, exchanging very often your own ignorances. Learn to listen to the tired and to the old. The kind of person I suppose that gives me the most difficulty is the tiresome who talks, 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 and never listens, who always has reasons for not doing the things he ought to have done, who is filled with more rationalization per square foot than anyone else that you can run across in a given 12-mile walk. They're the kind of people like the man at the pool of Bethesda, who for years and years would not go down to the purity of the clear waters to be cleansed because there just wasn't anyone to take him down. And he enjoyed his illness. He enjoyed being noticed for his negative attitude, he was simply tiresome. And we have an awful lot of those people around us. They're just tiresome, and they wonder why they're often lonely. They put, do not put work into their lives. Now, all of us cannot be leaders, but all of us can work. We may not all have IQs of 145, but we all have sufficient IQs to have graduated from high school and to be in college. And therefore, we have the ability to work. And this brings me to the third, and that is the tireless person who does and is strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, who forgets not that what he does that is good and great and beautiful is not of himself, but comes from the gift of God which gave him this particular talent. And I believe that if there's any talent that we have in common as human beings, it is the talent to work. And if your education teaches you nothing else, if it would just teach you to enjoy work, you would have accomplished three quarters of the battle of life. For it would likely be questionable that you would ever need a psychiatrist to tell you what's wrong with you, because you would find that there were so many things that you wanted to do, so many interests that were fine and good so much to reach out for in the world of tomorrow, from the world of your present, that you would not have time for self-indulgence. You would not have time to waste time, because time cannot be captured once it is gone. And time to man is the enemy. And the only way we meet the enemy is by work. Some of us can be more creative in our work than others, but on the whole, we do hold this in common. 
so that it is the tireless person that does so much for our society and for our world. He is the person who is strong in the Lord and in the power of his might.